Many people interested in points and miles know that the United States has the best offerings when it comes to credit cards. There are a plethora of cards available that offer amazing perks like free airport lounge access, top tier hotel status and crazy points earnings of up to 14 points per dollar. These cards aren't limited to individuals living in the US. You don't even have to be a US citizen to get your hands on them. This video is the first of a series of at least four where I will list the cards that I personally think are best suited for expats and people outside the US who have access to US credit cards. If you want to know how to get US credit cards, I'll list some options at the end of the video. So stick around if that sounds good to you. Hello, this is Kevin from Points Travel Tech. Like I mentioned in the intro, there are dozens of credit cards available on the US market. Today, I'll be focusing on the personal cards from American Express. I will cover Capital One, Chase and Citi in future videos of the series. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the new videos. If you're interested in videos regarding business credit cards, then let me know in the comments. Not all credit cards are ideal if you spend most of your time abroad and therefore a majority of your transactions aren't in US dollars. This brings me to the first criteria that every card you're looking at should have. No transaction fees. If your credit card doesn't charge foreign transaction fees, then you can spend your money in any currency worldwide and you will only pay the currency conversion but no additional fees. This is a highly sought after feature in Europe, which is very rarely offered with points earning credit cards. Quick tip, if the credit card terminal asks you if you want to pay in US dollars or the local currency of the country you're in, always go for the local currency. This will get you the cheapest conversion rate. This also applies when using your cards online on the non-US Amazon or PayPal versions, for example. So keep an eye out when you're using your credit cards. There are two other options I consider before applying for a US credit card, and these are if the point multipliers are valid worldwide or US only, and if the perks and credits that often decrease the annual fees can be used practically when living outside of the US or not. For the sake of keeping this long video as short as possible, I won't go into details of every perk. You can find all the information on the websites of the credit card issuers. Let's dive into the details with American Express. Amex offers 12 personal cards without foreign transaction fees. The website conveniently offers a bracket for NoFX fee cards. Of these 12, I consider four cards to be very good options. These are all three Hilton Honors cards and the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card. Starting with the latter, the Bonvoy Brilliant card earns 6 Marriott Bonvoy points per dollar on hotels, 3x on restaurants worldwide, 3x on flights, and 2x on everything else. The standard welcome offer is around 95,000 Marriott Bonvoy points. The annual fee is a hefty $650, but the best perks that come with this card are a $300 dining credit, an annual free night award worth up to 85,000 points, you receive this reward after your first card renewal, not when opening the card. Automatic Marriott Bonvoy Platinum status, $100 Global Entry or TSA PreCheck credit, and 25 Elite Nights. The dining credit, the welcome bonus in the first year, and the annual free night, starting with the second year alone, have the potential to cover the annual fee. Platinum status will get you free breakfast for two in most Marriott Bonvoy properties, lounge access, and the potential for suite upgrades. A quick note on global entry and TSA pre-check. If you're a US citizen, you shouldn't have a problem using this perk. If you're a citizen of one of these listed countries, then you're also eligible for global entry. Everyone else can't use this credit. This first card ticks all my boxes. No foreign transaction fees, useful points earning categories, and perks and credits I'm able to take advantage of. If you're into Marriott Bonvoy, there is hardly a way around this card. There is another personal Marriott card from Amex, the Marriott Bonvoy Bevy card. It's widely regarded as a very bad credit card, and you should only consider it if there is a good bonus and you really want the points. Otherwise, I'd stay away from it. One last note on Marriott Bonvoy cards. 
You'll see in a future video that Chase also offers Merit Bonvoy cards. The two issuers are competitors. Therefore, if you get one of the Amex Marriott cards, you will not be eligible for a welcome bonus on the Marriott cards issued by Chase for 24 months and vice versa. I am currently waiting for July 2024 to arrive since I got a Chase Marriott card in July of 2022. After that, I will apply for the Amex Bonvoy Brilliant card. On to the three Hilton cards. There is the Hilton Honors American Express card with no annual fee the Hilton Honors Surpass card with a $150 annual fee, and the Hilton Honors Aspire card with a $550 annual fee. If you're interested in Hilton hotels, then the no annual fee card is a very good option, especially for starting out. It's currently available with a bonus of 80,000 points, but there have been more lucrative offers in the past, which is insane considering there is no annual fee. The bonus categories are the biggest downsides to these cards. It earns 7x at Hilton properties, 5x on restaurants, supermarkets and gas stations in the US only, and 3x on everything else. Comparing this card to the Hilton visa available in Austria, Germany and Switzerland that earns 2x at Hilton and 1x on everything else, the no annual fee Hilton Amex card is still a way better points earner. Besides the automatic Hilton Honors silver status, which basically can be ignored, there are no other perks. This card is great for starting your credit card journey, adding some free points to your Hilton Honors account, and as a downgrade path for the Surpass or Aspire card. This brings me to the star of the portfolio, the Hilton Aspire card. If you occasionally stay in Hilton properties, there is no way around this card. It earns 14 points per dollar at Hilton Properties, 7x on flights and car rentals booked directly with the airlines and rental companies, 7x on US restaurants, and 3x on everything else. The current welcome offer is 150,000 points. Don't be afraid of the $550 annual fee as there are quite a few noteworthy perks. Upon receiving the card, you will get an annual free night certificate valid at almost any Hilton property in the world. This certificate alone has the potential to cover the annual fee. And yes, I did say upon receiving the card, meaning you get this in the first year. Additionally, there is a $400 resort, a $200 flight, and a $189 clear credit. On top of that, you get complimentary top tier national car rental executive elite and Hilton Honors diamond status. If Hilton Honors is your thing, then this is an S-tier no-brainer card. Placed in the middle, we have the Hilton Surpass card. The current bonus is 130,000 points. It earns 12x at Hilton, 6x on US dining, groceries, and gas stations, 4x on US online retail, and 3x on everything else. The annual fee is $150. The fee is mitigated by a $200 Hilton credit, national executive status, Hilton gold status, and the possibility to receive a free night certificate after you spend $15,000 in one year. The Hilton cards offer amazing perks, no foreign transaction fees, but aside from the great earning rates at Hilton's, the point multiplier categories are not ideal if you don't live in the United States. 7x on flights that the Aspire card offers is probably the best multiplier aside from the earning rates at Hilton Hotels. These were my top four Amex cards, and I already mentioned one card I can't recommend. What about the other seven Amex cards that don't charge foreign transaction fees? The four American Express Delta Airlines co branded cards really only make sense if you're often traveling with Delta. And if you're not living in the United States, this is very unlikely, so I don't recommend any of these cards. Finally, the Amex Green, Gold, and Platinum cards. These cards earn the powerful membership rewards points that can be transferred to many airlines and hotel programs. If you desperately want to earn this currency, then the Green and Gold cards are okay options. In my opinion, the US Platinum card is not a good option for people living outside of the United States. Be cautious if you plan on getting two or all three cards, as there is a new rule regarding the eligibility 
of welcome bonuses. In a nutshell, you have to apply in the exact order of green, then gold, then platinum. If you get the platinum first, you cannot get a welcome bonus for the green or gold card. If you get the gold first, you can't get a bonus for the green card. Luckily, the green card is quite interesting. The current bonus is 40,000 membership rewards points. It earns 3x on travel in a very broad sense, 3x on transit, again a very broad category, and 3x on dining. All of this worldwide. 1x on everything else. The annual fee is $150, and if you're not a US citizen, then you're most likely stuck with this fee, as the perks are a $189 clear credit and a $100 lounge buddy credit. If you don't have a priority pass from a different credit card, then you can make use of this credit, otherwise it's pretty useless. No foreign transaction fees and the bonus categories are great. The perks are lackluster. But all in all, a solid travel credit card. The gold card is a must-have if you're living in the United States. As an expat, it's not as compelling, unfortunately. The standard welcome bonus is 60,000 membership rewards points. It earns 4x at restaurants worldwide, 4x on groceries US only, 3x on flights booked directly with the airlines, and 1x on everything else. The annual fee is $250. This is combated by a $120 dining credit that you can use worldwide, a $120 Uber cash credit only usable in the US, and a $100 experience credit when you book a hotel via Amex Travel. Realistically, you can deduct $120 off the annual fee. If the grocery multiplier is ever changed to worldwide instead of US only, I'll jump on the card immediately as this would be the highest multiplier on dining and groceries on the market. But I have a good alternative coming up in a future video, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Finally, the Platinum card. Why do I not recommend this card? Because it only ticks one of the three boxes that are important in our case. We've already established that it doesn't have foreign transaction fees. The standard welcome offer is 80,000 points. The Platinum card earns 5x on flights booked directly with the airline or with Amex, 5x on hotels booked via Amex, and 1x on everything else. The annual fee is currently $695. And now behold the glorified coupon book that is the perks that come with the Amex Platinum card. A $200 hotel credit for prepaid hotel bookings via Amex Travel. A $240 entertainment credit for streaming services. A $155 Walmart Plus credit. A $200 Uber Cash credit. $200 airline fee credit a $100 Saks Fifth Avenue credit, $300 for Equinox, and $189 Clear Plus credit. Additionally, you'll get Marriott and Hilton Gold status, and status with Avis, Hertz, and National. And finally, you'll get a priority pass with unlimited lounge visits and access to the Amex Global Lounge Collection. That's a long list, and Amex claims you can get $1,500 in value from all these perks. But not if you don't reside in the US. The only credit that is fairly easy to use is the $200 credit for hotels. But if you have one of the Hilton or Marriott cards, you'll likely want to book directly with those brands. The $200 for airline incidentals is very restrictive. You have to choose an airline for the whole year. It's only US airlines you can choose. And then it only counts towards incidentals, not the ticket price. The only way I know you can use this credit to book flights is to choose United as your airline and buy United Travel Bank credit. This acts more or less as a gift card and can be used for tickets. Best case scenario, you're able to use $400 worth of credits. That's almost $300 of annual fee left uncovered. Add in the bonus categories, and you have a card that is very unfitting for our scenario. Someone who doesn't live in the United States. If you're someone who regularly books flights with your personal credit card, then the 5x multiplier on flights can make this card worth it, but only then.
Please keep in mind that all welcome bonuses are highly volatile and can sometimes be increased by simply browsing in incognito mode. Check out this increased offer on the Platinum card from 80k to 125,000 membership rewards points. And all I did was open a new private window on Safari. Alternatively, if you want to help out the channel, you can check out the links in the description and see if I can refer you to one of the cards you're interested in. Otherwise, do your research on how high the bonuses have been in the past. That wraps up the Amex cards I would personally recommend. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. Now, I promised you some information on how to get US credit cards when living abroad, even if you're not a US citizen. If you speak German, then I highly recommend checking out the US Credit Card Master Plan my friends Travel Insider Podcast and Gaia Dreams have created. It includes a step-by-step -step guide on everything you need to know. You don't even have to travel to the US to get the cards. Additionally, you'll get access to the closed Telegram group where all members share all their strategies and help each other out. If you follow the link in the description, you'll support my channel as well. If you live in Canada, I suggest you check out the channel Prince of Travel. Ricky has a few videos on there where he explains how Canadians can access US credit cards. For everyone else, I made this video explaining what is necessary to get started with US credit cards while living abroad. Hopefully, it will give you the info you need. If not, drop your questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out when the series continues. Happy credit card applying and see you soon.